Washington and is now Minister of State for Foreign Affairs. He joins us from Riyadh. Accusation that the kingdom's influence in the recent decision to cut oil production, pushing prices higher, at least in the short term, is siding with Russia. What's your response to that? Saudi Arabia is uh, not siding with Russia. Saudi, Saudi Arabia is taking the side of trying to ensure the stability of the oil markets, which benefits consumers and producers alike. We have been doing this for decades. We try to make sure that uh, we don't have erratic swings in prices so that we can have logic when it comes to investments, when it comes to lending, and when it comes to prices. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia uh, believes in this strongly. The decision to uh, reduce the quotas was taken unanimously by 22 countries, and the uh, market markets have responded uh, very positively to this. The price of oil has actually come down since last week, not gone up. Mm. Yeah, and that is the irony, of course. So Washington says the economic fundals, uh, fundamentals didn't justify a cut of that size at this point. And so the only beneficiary in their, their eyes, they say, is, is Vladimir Putin. The irony, of course, as I say, is that prices haven't actually moved any higher. As OPEC's largest producer, the kingdom must have considered the fallout when making the decision, which was a decision against the better judgment, reportedly, of other members who pushed back on it. Um, how concerned are you by these threats by President Biden of consequences for the kingdom's actions? Well, if you allow me, uh, Becky, the other point I would like to make is that Saudi Arabia has uh, mm. supported the UN resolution with regards to the uh, after the uh, crisis began between Russia and Ukraine. Saudi Arabia has opposes the acquisition of territory by force. Saudi Arabia has had open lines of communications with both Ukraine and Russia, and we have been able to use those open lines of communications to work out an agreement on the exchange of prisoners of war. This would not have happened had we been viewed as taking sides between one side and the other. Saudi Arabia provides humanitarian assistance to Ukraine and continues to do so, and we're looking for ways to try to bring the two sides to the negotiating table to find a resolution, a negotiated resolution out of this issue. We don't uh, believe that escalation is uh, beneficial to Europe or beneficial to the world, frankly. President Joe Biden has repeatedly said now that there will be consequences to Saudi, uh, to Saudi for this deal without revealing the details. Now, we do know that many congressmen and women are, are threatening to freeze arms sales to the kingdom, to, uh, to pull U.S. troops from the kingdom, to limit OPEC's influence on the markets going forward. Does that worry you? What's the risk involved? if these actions, these consequences, these I alternatives can, uh, yeah. are, are, are carried out? I, I can't speak to the motivations uh, of statement, uh, behind statements by officials. Uh, what I can tell you is that the uh, sale of defensive weapons to Saudi Arabia serves the interest of the U.S. and serves the interest of Saudi Arabia and serves the interest of security and stability in the Middle East. The presence of American forces in the Middle East has been here for many, many decades. Uh, they are here to protect the stability and security of the Middle East and the stability and security of the United States. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and the U.S. have had a very strong relationship for eight decades. They have been very close partners in fighting extremism and terrorism, in maintaining stability and security, in, uh, defend, in defending the region, and have been very close allies in terms of economic and trade and investment. And we hope that this relationship, and look forward to this relationship continuing mm. for the next eight decades. The problem is that there are those now, Saudi's critics in Washington, who say that Saudi Arabia is weaponizing oil. U.S. senators from both sides of the aisle are expressing increased frustration with the kingdom. I spoke to one Democratic senator, a member of the Foreign Relations Committee, Chris Murphy, last hour. So have a listen to what he told me. The Saudis can't separate the economics of oil from the politics of oil. Um, they can't do that because it is the 
economics of oil, it is the revenue from that oil that is allowing the Russians to perpetuate a campaign that is killing thousands of civilians inside of uh, inside of Ukraine. It is the revenue from that oil that has allowed for the Saudis to perpetuate a campaign inside Yemen that has killed thousands of civilians. So, you know, I understand the Saudis want to say, hey, we make all of our decisions with respect to oil independent of the political consequences, but they know that's not true. They know that there is a linkage between uh, the economics of oil and the politics of oil. And they also know that the United States has been an ally for decades with the Saudis uh, because uh, we wanted to make sure that we had the ability to uh, get oil from the Middle East to the United States to power our economy. So we're a security partner with the Saudis in large part because we want to make sure that we protect the oil that is important to our economy. So you just can't separate the economics of oil from the politics of oil. You can't. And this is a congressman, by the way, who has said um, that the U.S. should now cut ties with Saudi Arabia. Your response, sir? With all due respect, I believe the assumptions upon which the statements were made are not correct. Saudi Arabia does not politicize oil. We don't see oil as a weapon. We don't. We see oil as a commodity. Our objective is to bring stability to the oil market, oil markets, and our. Uh, record is very clear on this, not over the past few weeks, but over the past decades. We have always thought, uh, sought to ensure that there are adequate supplies of crude oil to the markets. We have always uh, maintained, worked to maintain stability and re reduce the uh, erratics in the price of oil so that both consumers and producers benefit. This has been our policy. Now, if anyone wants to speculate and read something else into it that is not correct, mm. I can't really do much about it. But what I can tell you is we have a track record. The track record has been around for decades, and our track record has been clear. We have always worked assiduously to maintain stability in the oil markets, and we have always worked to ensure that there are adequate supplies in the oil markets. Uh, Drastic increase in the price of oil or, or drastic drops in the price of oil are very damaging to the global economy and damaging to consumers everywhere, whether it's in the United States or whether it's in Saudi Arabia. What will the kingdom's response be should some of the actions that these congressmen and women, um, that the, uh, those on the Hill are looking to effect, um, a, a, you know, the, 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 there is clearly a school of thought that says, you know, this, this relationship is broken. And that is from Washington's perspective. Is that your perspective at this point? And should some of these threats come good on breaking the relationship, what would the kingdom's response be? I don't believe this relationship is broken very far from it. This relationship is very robust. We have almost 80,000 Americans living and working in Saudi Arabia. We have a very strong mm -hmm. trade and investment relationship. We work very closely with regards to ensuring our common interests, whether it's to bring peace to Yemen, whether it's to bring peace between Israelis and Arabs, whether it's to stabilize Afghanistan, whether it's to reintegrate Iraq into the Arab fold, whether it's to bring stability to the Horn of Africa, stability and peace in Libya, in the G5 countries of the Sahel, whether it's to fight extremism and terrorism, those interests are permanent and those interests are tremendously important to both countries and to the security and stability not only of the region but the world. And so that it is incumbent both, upon both countries to work together in order to uh, realize uh, the objectives that they both have, which occur to the benefit of both people and both countries. Now, I can't, uh, unfortunately, when you're in the election season, what some people call the funny season, a lot of things are said and a lot of things are done that maybe may not make sense at another period of time. And I hope that this is what we're dealing with here. However, when it comes to the relationship between the two countries, it's fundamental, it's very strong. And it's uh, fundamental and strong because the interests of the two countries require that they work very closely together in order to come the, overcome the many challenges that they face. I want to get back to this decision and just press you a bit on the timing of this OPEC Plus decision. Um, we've considered um, the, um, uh, the fallout in Washington during this interview. Multiple reports citing officials briefed on discussion say that other OPEC Plus uh, members, not least the UAE and Iraq, were pushing back 
on the cut. They didn't want to see the size of the cut, nor did they want to see this production cut happen uh, when it did. They questioned the timing of that cut. On hindsight, and given the fallout that the kingdom is seeing uh, reputationally on the Hill in Washington at present, and these questions about uh, the relationship going forward between Saudi Arabia and the U.S. On reflection, might the Saudis have acted differently? Well, we have uh, what happens in discussions before decisions are made um, is something that uh, that uh, really I, I was not privy to because I wasn't at the t during the talks. But what I can tell you is what counts is the bottom line. Every member of OPEC and OPEC plus countries supported this decision, so that's what we go by. Uh, with regard to speculation or statements to the contrary, I don't subscribe to those because I believe that the bottom line is everybody agreed to it, so it was a unanimous decision. So that's one. Um, and with regards to uh, looking forward, I think uh, we're looking forward to more stable markets and we're looking forward to markets that are adequately supplied and we're looking forward to avoiding uh, uh, erratic behavior in the markets.